In what ways does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? Our project takes most of its inspiration from Seven. Seven used many of the conventions of a crime thriller that we needed, such as slow build-ups and a tense but slow flow through the introduction. We recreated the beginning scene of the main character in Seven, moving about his apartment, being very methodical, but added our own much more sinister twist to it, creating a more tense atmosphere. While we focused almost entirely on one character, as opposed to films such as Tarantino's Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs that have many protagonists that cross paths and are also viewed as antagonists from another character's perspective. We challenge this by focusing on developing one character and his backstory rather than trying to portray multiple at once, while still using the same crime convention of a gruff detective. We have a false title, Daisy Chain, that would suggest a romantic genre to the film, but when combined with the funds and the colour and the actual genre of the film, would suggest otherwise and be linked to a more sinister meaning in the same way that children combined with classic horror conventions will have. We have linked our title with the narrative of our project as the daisy chain is representative of the murders, similar to how the number 7 in the stylized 7 logo represents the 7 deadly sins. The music in our project, while overpowering, helps use and develop thriller conventions as it helps reinforce the enigma of the film and build suspense and tension throughout the scene. The second piece of music in the project comes after the big reveal and is straight up horror using sharp chords and jarring in the piece to make the atmosphere feel uneasy. We challenge the conventions of typical thriller slash horror films by having a slow build up at the beginning of the film, developing the character but very suddenly turning the theme sour and reducing the big enigma. How does your media product represent particular social groups? The hero of the film is a white middle aged male detective who lives on his own. This is a convention of a crime thrilling film such as Seven as the hero is a middle aged male living on his own that suffers from social problems due to work life controlling their social life. Our film plays the traditional stereotype of a protagonist of a crime film as a police officer, but we change the usual convention of an agent or a spy and use the character of a detective. The character is retired, but as portrayed in the film, still obsessed with his work. And this represents that retired detectives will remain attached to their work life. And this is further reinforced by the roles of the characters in other crime thrillers, for example, Bruce Wayne or Commissioner Gordon in The Dark Knight, who both upheld the law and were also obsessed with their work so that they don't have much social life at all. We tried to get an older character but were limited to a teenager, so we had to improvise by dressing him in a suit typical of what a detective wears in film during work and their social time, representing them as being very professional, smart and also further reinforcing the fact they're always working. What kind of media institution might distribute your media product and why? A media institution is an organisation or company that is accountable for a media text. It is used through distribution, marketing and pro production and is often profit based. Our media product is an open to a film so we researched into film institutions to distribute our media product. We thought about the genre of our film being a crime thriller and what genres of films other film institutions are well known for. We looked at Hammer Films, which is a smaller based media institute. They are widely known for their films in horror and thriller. We also looked at 20th Century Fox, but soon realised they had filmed mainly comedy and home family movies. However, some of their film experience the thriller and horror genre too, with films such as Jennifer's Body and Hell. These are the successful thriller films of the film institution, but we found it hard to find a film that came under the subgenre of crime thriller. We also looked at Lionsgate, who are a well-known company for horror and thriller films. They have distributed films such as The Last House in the Woods and Alone in the House. From researching into possible film institutions, we decided that Lionsgate would be the right film studio to distribute our film because they are well-known for their horror and thriller films, which fits in with the genre of our film. Lionsgate distributed films such as Now You See Me, which included a lot of plot twists and tricks that the audience into thinking something about the film when it turns out differently. This fits into our film because at the start we have the use of the knife which the audience automatically think that the character could be the antagonist. Also, Lionsgate isn't as big as other film institutions such as Paramount and Warner Brothers so our film would be prioritised more with Lionsgate. 
It's also the sixth most profitable film distributor, so we know that the film would have a large audience. We researched also into the budget of crime thriller films and the profit they had made from them. We looked at Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. Reservoir Dogs had a low budget of 1.2 million and made a worldwide gross of 6.5 million just in the UK. Pulp Fiction has a budget of 8.5 million, which is a larger budget than Reservoir Dogs, but made a gross of 213 million worldwide. By researching into this, we found that our film would be a smaller independent film. Who would be the audience for your media product? The target audience we aimed for when creating this film was primarily males aged 18 to 40. The broad age range is helpful to the film as it has a wider audience that would be interested in the concept. We believe that the male audience would be interested in the film as it is a crime thriller that incorporates mystery, violence and suspense. There will also be a female audience but not as large because the enigma of the film will draw those in since it has a more mature audience and sympathy will be felt for the character in his life. The class that will mainly view the film will be lower middle class as the film is quite sophisticated in the way that it isn't your run of the mill action film of people running around shooting people with no story. The target audience isn't so much class though as it is really more focused on age and gender. A crime thriller slash horror with an age rating of 18 would definitely fetch a more mature audience and as stated mostly male viewers due to the violent nature of the film. How did you attract and address your audience? The target audience we chose was predominantly males aged between 18 to 40 years old. We chose this because thrillers have action and gore which in to us are principally male interest. Although it's predominantly male audience it will also attract females of the same age range. We believe this because it includes deep emotion from the detective to the victim and we believe that the women will be allowed to will be able to emote with the character and empathise with the detective's emotional connection to the deceased. At the beginning of the sequence we are shown a knife. The knife represents violence, anger and power to males. This will excite and evolve the audience to make them feel inferior to the knife. As we move along the scene it is shown that the detective has a mental disorder called Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, or OCD. This is characterised by the repetitive behaviour of moving cups and flicking on and off light switches. This, as him being male, that has been disabled by this, will emote with both males and females, as this is a representative of how much the dis disability cripples him in a daily repetitive routine that he's scared to break. Moving on to the new scene, images of the victim are shown that creates a sad atmosphere which grasps both males and females because the victim is an innocent child. By using a child, this encourages all that have children themselves to feel empathetic towards the death of Tabitha the teen. Emotions are now heightened as we move the frantic actions of the detective looking at the diary in his pocket. The diary, in command with the image on the phone of the detective, causes suspense and mystery until we reach the climax of the scene where the book reads, You are next. The scene is then abrupt into darkness. This is a high, fast-paced, edge-of-the-seat emotion that drives the whole audience to feel scared and worried for the detective. Because the de detective is male, it appears more to the male gender as they can emote more to the, his persona. The music in the sequence is fast-paced, which adds the intensity of the scene. Males are seen to like more fast-paced movies than women because act action and strength require testosterone. If we were to market the film, I would use posters of a male standing in shallow shadows and a girl facing forefront with daisies in her eyes. A bit like the cover image of The Silence of the Lambs, which is a psychological horror. What have you learnt about technologies from the process of constructing this product? We used Sony HD cameras to film our project with. Using these, we've learnt how to effectively set up different shot types using freehand with the camera or mounting it on a tripod. We also used these cameras to take still images of the set to plan our filming. To create the title we used Adobe Photoshop CS5. Having never used it before we learnt very quickly how to create an edited still image for our title and help teach each other different things we could do in the software to effectively use it. To edit our project we used Premiere Pro. 
This software was completely new to us, but we quickly learned how to use it and managed to add effects and cut together our film much better than we could have with something such as iMovie. We experimented with After Effects but couldn't find an effective way to use it really and so used it to just create an opening title card. To publish our research and keep it in a safe place where all group members could view each other's work we used Blogger. This was a much more effective way of sharing research with other group members. Before pl publishing to Blogger we planned out most of our script on Word. For editing the project and doing most practical work, we used an Apple iMac on OS X because it had an external hard drive to store our work on. Macs are also standard equipment in the media industry and using them for our project helps us learn how to use them. Adobe software often crashes on PCs as it is not supported very well and you need a very powerful and very expensive computer to run it so it was much easier to just use. Max, as we will do in the industry. We used Windows laptops and desktops to publish to our blog and do any other research with, while one other group member was editing the main project. Looking back at your preliminary task, what do you feel you have learnt in the progression from it to the full product? From doing the preliminary task to the final product of the film, we feel that with more knowledge on the conventions of a thriller film and the conventions that are important for an overall film opening, firstly, we feel that we have grown as a group and become more comfortable and confident around each other when putting across ideas and thoughts to each other. This has helped the film opening become more successful because we were able to make it to the best we could. We have been able to work together well as a team to produce an appropriate filler film opening and picked out the strengths and weaknesses of our shots. Because of how successful our team has been working together, we have felt more confident in allocating roles, knowing that we will get the work and the film opening done. Overall, it has a positive impact on the making of our film and the overall outcome. We have also progressed in the use of using our video cameras since the preliminary task, as during the filming of our film, we took the time to take turns to film the different shots. This got us all more used to being behind the camera and taking suitable shots. This was difficult for Jack, however, because he was our main character in our film opening. This means he didn't have the opportunity to do the filming of the main storyline. However, during the making of the news report, we had Jack film most of his as he was not in the shot. Overall, we had all made progress on operating film cameras since we did the preliminary task. In the opening of our film we included different conventions and features such as match on action and the 100 degree rule. We used the 100 degree rule by remembering to stay on one side of the action and not switching to different places of the scene. This made sure that we didn't confuse the audience and the film flowed for each scene. We applied all this knowledge to our film production by all taking part to make the film as successful as we could. We did this by taking roles and all taking time to do different roles, and not just one. Amelia did most of the film so she experienced operating the camera and got a visual feel for the film. She knew when we had to redo shots and how to make the shots the best that we could. I and Jack took an acting role in the film production so we experienced making the film the best we could also visually. We chose to use us as characters and not actors or other people because we felt that we knew the storyline better and could put across the intensity and emotion when needed. Overall, we took part in the editing, which took the longest time in the making of the film. We feel that this was the most important part of the filmmaking, and we learnt the most from working with Adobe Premiere. We think that the difference between our preliminary task and the end product of our film opening shows how much progression we have made and what skills we have picked up to create a successful film opening.